so what we were able to do with that group of folks was um, identify 32 standards and 76 practice indicators with hundreds of vignettes, stories from each of the programs about what those things look like. Um, we found that the practices are aligned to learning science, so we'd like to say that there's not very much new information necessarily in this guidebook, but it is deep and rich and extensive. Um, and it's aligned to learning science. We know that SEL skills support learning of all types, um, that they, those skills are linking us to, um, to other success. And what we've boiled it down to is the success of these SEL programs, the, we'd like to describe the intervention as project-based learning with intensive co-regulation. So those two parallel lines that we're going through that picture, right, a project sequence, an intensive project that's happening and presenting challenges that youth need to work through, and then the intensive co-regulation where staff are stepping in and helping youth to solve those problems, but really helping youth to do it on their own. Um, and so those two pieces are really the essential elements of, of what so good social emotional learning looks like. We had a suite of performance measures that we used through the study, um, and we measured learning um, at, three time, at three different levels, right? So we had the organization level, where we looked at things like the staffing model, whether there was a focus on school day content, horizontal and vertical communication, which was a, a measure of really how well do the staff communicate with each other, and then how much does a supervisor intervene with a staff member and support that person. Um, job satisfaction and a manageable workload, right? Elements of, of whether staff are feeling you know, supported in that organization. Then at the point of service level, we looked at youth governance, so how much they have a, a, youth have a say in um, the rules and the regulations of the program. In curriculum planning, whether staff are, are you know, given time to, to um, plan and debrief their lessons before and after. Um, growth and mastery, which is a measure of how much the program um, is dependent, you know, it, that it builds over time, that there are multiple sessions that build on each other, um, that skills are, uh, that there's an opportunity to practice skills. So we, those, those features that are important to, um, to young people growing and mastering skills. And then instructional quality, which was the youth PQA, and youth engagement, which we measured also at the times um, through a youth survey um, at each of the time points where we measured the observational data. And then youth SEL skills in those six domains. So again, those belief measures from child trends, as well as the staff rating of the behaviors that they saw in the young people. So we collected all of this information, um, and we used a bit of a continuous improvement in process with the, uh, with the grantees in the program. So after the baseline data was collected, that January we had um, at the second convening, we presented the data back to the sites and asked them to think about what, what the data told them about the young people in their program and about the exper experiences and opportunities that were being offered in that program. So the performance findings were part of the project and are part of the work that is the next phase of the SEL challenge, which is to build these measures and these skills into a continuous improvement process in after school programs. So one of the things that we found out were the SEL programs um, in the challenge were exceptionally high quality. So we wanted to find programs that did this work and did it well, and our findings show that we found the right people. <laughs> so their work w is exceptional. Um, so this, again, is from the, prog the youth program quality assessment, which has been sort of rearranged so that we have the six domains of skills that align with the challenge. The pink bars are the eight SEL challenge programs, and then the gray bars are a de-identified reference database from um, you know, a representation of high school and middle school programs from, um, from various after school networks across the country that the Weikert Center has been able to collect over the past decade. So um, you can see that the social emotional turn challenge programs um, have much higher scores on the program quality assessment. Um, we think that that level of quality is an important element of what what they're able to do in order to show growth. But we also feel like this presents a bit of a benchmark for, um, for other programs that, are, um, that would like to be doing more social emotional learning in their programs. These two graphs show the trajectories of the SEL skill growth. So we think that due to that high quality, that the programs were able to actually make change in the young people in their program. So these are the average scores for all of the youth in the full sample at the three time points um, for each domain. And so the scores are going up. The, the scale here is from two and a half to four and a half. Um, the, the, um, the skill growth is apparent in each of the domains. This graph shows the effect sizes. So the, um, 
The effect sizes are much greater for the behavior measures than they are for the belief measures, but there is still positive effect size for each of the skill domains. So again, we feel like there's some benchmarks for SEL performance that this work has provided. So the first is that um, the staff and the youth in the programs, in all eight of the programs, was very diverse. Um, and oftentimes the, um, the, the staff is reflecting the diversity of the youth in the program. Um, intensive participation, so the programs ranged in, uh, in dosage from a few hours a week to a total of you know, over 300 hours from the time of year, but whatever it was, it was an intensive participation. Um, and the other part was ex expert adult guidance. So the staff in these programs um, have been kind of honing their skills over time and are, are able to provide guidance to the young people that's based on their expertise. Um, highly collaborative organizational cultures was another through line. Um, every one of the organizations uh, had, had planning time for the staff before and, and debriefing time after programs. Um, there are constant communication between the staff about the work that they're doing, things that they're learning about the young people and what those young people are experiencing. And that was, that was continual and consistent across all of the programs. Exceptionally high quality instruction and youth engagement, as we saw and then a consistent pattern of, of being able to actually change the SEL skills in those, um, in those programs. Particularly, and we go into this a little bit more in the technical report, that young people who are, in, um, who are at risk, so maybe who present, um, who start out at a lower level of social and emotional skills, bring fewer strengths to the program, those young people increase their SEL skills even more than the, the young people who start a little bit higher. 